Ruin, are you there? And if you are, are you ready to go in a little bit earlier? You are online yes, as well. here. Sorry, I'm, I'm just uh, finishing my presentation. Uh, I thought oh. I had uh, some more time, but I'm, I'm, uh, I'm almost ready. You're almost ready because uh, our friend from Germany has not shown up yet. And therefore, uh, if there's a possibility that you can go in instead of him earlier, then he might come in later. <coughs> I don't know. Is that a possibility? Well, if if uh, if you think so, I'm I'm ready to go now and um, leave time for him uh, after me, of course. Oh, it's very kind of you. Thank you. Then we'll say thank you for that, and uh, and uh, then Sven, please uh, go ahead with the distributed electricity uh, generation in Sweden, a vision for a more secure energy supply. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm uh, really grateful for the chance to give this presentation, uh, although I can unfortunately not um, participate more uh, in this uh, conference. Um, I believe it uh, is um, a very interesting program you have put together, but uh, for, for different reasons, I, I uh, cannot do um, more this time. Uh, so, uh, I will uh, now try to share my presentation with you. So, um, uh, is it working? Can can you see my presentation? Yes, that's great. Uh, so, um, I uh, wanted to talk about distributed electricity generation in Sweden and give you my vision uh, of um, how we could uh, uh, use this uh, for a more secure energy supply. Uh, but um, starting with the basics, uh, I just wanted to remind that uh, for a small wind to play an important role in this, uh, part of the small wind sector needs to improve. We have talked about this um, previously uh, in other conferences and um, you know how we have discussed for example certification, uh, testing uh, and using the consumer label uh, as important steps uh, to do this. But we are not there yet. Um, I'm still hoping we will see, for example, a, a, a turbine or many turbines tested at the Folke Center having the uh, consumer label soon. And um, I, I just wanted to share with you a, a, a recent example of, of what a small wind turbine user wrote to me. Uh, this is in Swedish. Uh, uh, I will try to give you a qu quick translation. Uh, uh, then I can scrap the turbine directly. There is no reason to listen to that sound if it brings so little. I understood it was bad, but not that it is so terribly inefficient. I have good wind conditions. And then he goes on. So unfortunately, I come across many owners of small wind turbines who still have a very bad experience with them. Um, some would even say uh, this is uh, close to fraud, uh, what's going on in the small wind turbine business. So we really need to improve there. And I, I want uh, to say also, of course, that there are other parts of the small wind turbine sector doing much better already. So uh, I'm, I'm very glad for the manufacturers who are doing certification, testing, consumer labeling, etc. already. Uh, but I also wanted to mention something else uh, here on the topic of, of security and fraud, because I understand you are in other parts of this conference um, talking about military applications. And um, there are uh, some who, who uh, actually see 
um, the military in Sweden, for example, as a bigger fraud. And um, that can be worth uh, thinking about if, if small wind turbine companies are thinking about entering this sector. Do we really want to be part of this? Uh, which some then even think is, is um, sort of betraying your own people. Uh, a controversial statement perhaps, but I'm, I'm afraid that, um, that this is um, something we, we need to face if we are uh, talking about this topic. Um, what I instead want to uh, focus on is uh, civil defense and uh, uh, I wanted to bring up a topic there, which I think is uh, really important, and that is our dependence on um, electricity. And um, that long power outage uh, is a severe threat to our society. Uh, just to give some examples, uh, if we have a long power outage, one of the first things we'll probably notice is um, uh, the lack of potable water. Uh, many people can't even get the water out of their well without an electric pump. So, um, uh, you know, water is one of the most important things we, we, we need. And um, um, that is like many things in our society linked to using electricity today. The same goes with food. Um, many stores cannot operate uh, without electricity. Uh, you cannot usually pay for food anymore without electricity. Uh, here in Sweden, uh, some are, uh, you know, pushing hard for a society without cash. So if you all have electronic payments, um, you can imagine how difficult that would be in a situation with a long power outage. Fuels will also be a problem that will soon be noticed. Um, electric pumps are usually needed if, for you to be, be able to fill your car with fuel. And um, there are many aspects of this. Um, I, some time back, uh, talked to uh, one of the people responsible for running the national grid in Sweden. Uh, and um, he explained uh, the vulnerability that all emergency power basically is based on diesel fuel and uh, if there would be a crisis you can imagine uh, the demand for diesel fuel and what some people might do to uh, uh, get that fuel so he was wondering uh, is it really so smart that uh, we, we base our uh, emergency uh, power for example for running the uh, national grid, uh, I mean, not the whole grid, of course, but, but for substations and things like that, but also hospitals and, and the other important things in our society uh, on um, diesel fuel. And also uh, what I'm mentioning here is something few are aware of is that uh, in many cases, um, spent uh, nuclear fuel could overheat if uh, there is no electric power for say a number of weeks because um, often um, cooling is is needed not just for the power plants uh, that are in operation but also for uh, old spent fuel. Uh, this issue with our dependence on electricity was highlighted by a TV a series uh, which was shown earlier this year on Swedish television. At least those who are in Sweden can still watch it. It's called the uh, Nedslekt Land. And um, it, it ended with, uh, um, you can say, uh, a, a realization of, of um, uh, the difficulty to, to get food uh, in this case, but also other things, of course. So uh, I'm, I want to come now into the, the, the part where I, I uh, go into the possible solutions for this. And uh, when we are talking about our dependence on electricity and the importance to, to 
avoid or handle power outages, I think that distributed generation can help. Um, and there are different ways how distributed generation can help. Um, on, on the top level, you could say it, it could help build a more robust energy system than with only large power plants. So this would be a way to, to prevent outages. Um, this point is that by using many small power plants, you are less vulnerable. Uh, with, with a few centralized power plants, uh, there is a large vulnerability to, to uh, if, if anything happens to those plants or their um, transmission system. Uh, now, uh, the second point here is that if a national or regional power outage would occur, distributed generation can be part of an autonomous or self-regulated cell area. Um, and uh, uh, this has actually been studied in uh, Denmark. Uh, so uh, this could be a, a way to uh, still run at least part of the power grid uh, during a crisis. And uh, the third point here, if, if nothing else um, helps, uh, so uh, there is a power outage. Uh, in some cases, distributed generation could also be part of a local backup system or systems. And uh, the distributed generation we're talking about is of course not only wind. I wanted to show you some other examples of um, a technology that is coming and can be very useful for this. Uh, this is a pellet driven Stirling engine uh, from a company in Austria. So this is an example of combined heat and power. Uh, and uh, I want to point out that contrary to traditional diesel generators for backup, small renewable energy systems are typically economical to run most of the time. I think this is very important to be aware of. Uh, if you invest in um, a renewable energy system, which has um, backup capability or can help uh, in other ways, uh, that that's something that will usually be economical. Uh, also, uh, when uh, you are in a business as usual scenario. Uh, and I, I want to stress this because uh, we don't know if a crisis would come uh, or when it would come uh, that requires uh, backup solutions. Hopefully it will never come. So if you would just invest in, in the traditional um, uh, engine driven generators, uh, you know, that, that would not be an economical investment uh, in the business as usual scenario, but the renewables can be useful for both the business as usual scenario and the crisis scenario. So multi-use is a key. And um, here is an example of multi-use of um, batteries, in this case, batteries in electric cars. So this is a vehicle to grid demonstration in Copenhagen, which I had the pleasure to visit. Uh, these cars, uh, together with the V2D uh, bidirectional chargers, uh, play a role in the power system by doing frequency regulation. So this is an example of how uh, new solutions are coming, which can also help uh, with uh, frequency regulation and other things that are needed to, to run, uh, for example, a, a, a cell uh, of the power grid. Small wind turbines can play a crucial role, I would say. And, and three things speaking for that. Uh, for example, in Sweden, the average wind speed is higher during winter when we need energy the most. 
Uh, so it's a much better match than um, solar PV, for example. Second, no fuel is needed. Uh, we, um, I mentioned before uh, that uh, supply of fuel, especially imported, of course, can be uh, a difficulty. And third, um, small wind turbines can usually be built and maintained with local resources. This is, of course, not always the case, but uh, there is a possibility for um, uh, some turbines uh, to fulfill this anyway. Also, I wanted to show uh, some examples of, of island systems. In this case, they are off-grid, but um, it um, exemplifies how uh, advanced technology can help us achieve things many probably didn't think was possible with small wind turbines. So this photo is from Svenska Högarna in, in the Stockholm archipelago, uh, where Chalmers demonstrated a system uh, where island grid frequency control is done by the wind turbine. So uh, frequency control has been shown many years ago is, is actually possible if you equip the wind turbine for this. In this case, uh, it was a variable speed wind turbine. Uh, I mentioned before uh, the project in Denmark, uh, where uh, an autonomous cell could be operated if the rest of the grid failed. There is a public report uh, which can be downloaded about this, uh, for example, on energynautics.com. And one of the lessons learned was that a robust island capable system must invariably include load shedding functionality. This is one of the things we've been working on uh, on Terok uh, for off grid applications. And uh, we are now looking at the possibility to use it uh, in a wider context. Uh, this is a further development uh, of the technology from Svenska Högarna. In this case, I participated on another island where the wind turbine can actually control both frequency and voltage. As long as the wind blows strong enough, uh, and um, this is um, uh, also a variable speed wind turbine where the power electronics make this possible. And I should just to clarify, say that this uh, has been demonstrated to work also without uh, any battery connected and without any diesel generator running uh, in parallel. Uh, so it was just the wind turbine uh, doing this uh, control and keeping frequency and voltage in range uh, on the grid. So uh, to summarize, my vision for distributed generation is um, to use it for uh, civil defense. Uh, and small wind turbines and other equipment can provide energy security. Uh, and I think we should do further development of technology, business models, and incentives for this. If you have questions or wish to visit our test and demonstration site, uh, feel free to contact me. And thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Sven. It was uh, really interesting. Uh, and also the conclusions uh, you draw up to now. Uh, what we see around is that the only thing we are told anyhow, the only thing working is is not the uh, decentralized systems, but only the very big centralized grid systems where we have a very big cable going from North Cap to Sicily. And uh, if someone break this, um, or it is bombed or whatever can happen, uh, then we everybody has a problem. Uh, I know that we, uh, anyhow, are divided in, in, in sectors. We have an East and Denmark are together with Norway and Sweden and the Western part of Denmark together with, uh, with Germany but any, uh, and the rest of Europe. But uh, 
anyhow, uh, it seems as it's very important that it will be recognized in the future that, uh, the, that the distributions net will be used much more and that uh, these off-grid systems, uh, which uh, you'll talk about, will have a much bigger role to play. Um, how do you see, for example, in Sweden, is the a political will uh, to go in and look at these matters because we know that the utilities have another agenda. Uh, but um, how does it look uh, if you look at the uh, play? A lot of players have a civil defense, and uh, in their interest, they, they of course want these things. But are the government hearing what they are saying? I don't know everything that's happening, but. Uh... I believe there is a growing awareness of, of uh, the need for um, a crisis preparedness. I think the Corona situation has uh, much to do with that, but also other reasons. Uh, so uh, slowly, I think uh, more capacity is built for this, but I'm, I'm afraid it's um, it's uh, perhaps going too slowly and not not focusing enough on on our dependence on the electricity. Uh, and that's where I think we could do such a difference with the uh, small wind turbines, uh, for example. So uh, I, I wish we could put this more on the agenda. Um, now is probably the right time because we, we have realized that, uh, um, well, I think the pandemic has made us realize that we cannot take everything for granted, which we have done before. Well, I fully agree. Uh, and also, I think that we have a, a step right now where a lot of things can can be done, which was not able to be done a year ago because of a new thoughts, especially about the corona and so on. But uh, I know that you're very busy. So therefore, unfortunately, as I said, you cannot uh, follow us the rest of the day. So therefore, I think we should leave the floor open. And if there are any questions, uh, I would like to raise them. Uh, Jon, you have a you have a, um, a question. Uh, hi, Sven. Thank you for your presentation. Um, I find it very useful and relevant. Um, my question is that we've had quite a bit of success with uh, small wind off grid um, frequency control and general better utilization of the energy available. Um, and I'm a big believer that um, the wind is a very good solution because generally your energy demand, be it heating or electric, is higher during the windier, colder times. Uh, my concern is uh, two, well, two questions really. One is, um, do you have a view on how to moderate the cost relevant to the small wind industry? Uh, and two, do you see the small wind grid connected derivatives being able to utilize frequency control for their own uh, consumption or for their own benefit? Uh, two questions there. Thank you. Um, if the first one was about cost, and and that's a really important and hard one, of course. Uh, my my best idea would probably be if if something similar could be done to what was done with solar PV. I mean, if you go back a few decades, solar PV was really expensive, and by building a volume market, uh, especially in Germany, you know how prices were pushed down. So I really wish someone would do something similar with small wind, you know, to make industrialization and mass production, and, you know, show what it can do. And I mean, it's not just about the production of the turbines, it's also about more efficient uh, ways to install them. And all of this would be so much easier if we had a real market like there is for solar PV, I mean, that's subsidized in Sweden, for example. <laughs> Small wind is not subsidized that way. I think uh -huh. we have a very similar problem in the UK. 
Yes, <laughs> it's the same in many places. But so maybe I, I'm 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 dreaming a bit, but. Uh, uh, if if uh, if I'm allowed to dream, it, it would be for someone to make a, a lasting and 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 a good market uh, for for small wind, not not just a temporary uh, subsidy that goes away too quickly. And um, I think it should also be linked to quality um, control. Um, but anyway, to to uh, go to the next question there about. Um, the advanced controls like controlling frequency. Uh, um, my thinking is that normally you would want to use the power grid when it's there. And, and most people live where they have the power grid. So most small wind turbines sold would be for that application, I suppose, at least, uh, you know, above a certain size. And um, I think there can be technical options to 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 make a power system that would you know be made for that application, but also have have maybe some uh, additional control modes which could be useful in a in a crisis situation. I mean, if if you would have a a version with a, a frequency converter, and you know maybe that could be dual use both for on grid and and um, uh, also uh, have some off grid functionality to control frequency and voltage if 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 needed. Um, maybe that doesn't help make it cheaper, but but uh, um, uh, it could be worth looking at. I believe. Yeah, I think the, the problem that we are experiencing is although we have the ability to be able to utilize better the energy available with a wind turbine whilst it is off grid it's quite the control systems required to do the same whilst it is on grid um, there's still a bit of development work to be done there and i'm sure that there's plenty of other wind turbine manufacturers and installers scratching their head trying to uh, work out the best way of doing that. It's obviously easier with inverter driven turbines to a greater extent. Well, it's not necessarily obviously, but it, it, uh, I think it is. Um, but it just doesn't appear to be off the shelf equipment to do have that functionality at the moment. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, if we're speaking about something that could work in, in extreme circumstances, uh, uh, although I know we, we can, you know, do amazing things with power electronics, they also tend to be more sensitive. So uh, that's, of course, also something to consider, maybe, maybe a, a more robust solutions uh, with less power electronic could be interesting also. Um, uh, interesting talk. I, I hope uh, this this will be something where others have have uh, have solutions that maybe I don't um, have ready. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Well, thank you. Uh, are there other questions? Because we know that uh, Swin will be leaving us soon. Uh, if there are any questions, we have to take them up now. Otherwise, uh, we see that uh, Jean Daniel uh, has come in. But first of all, I would like to thank you very much, Sven, for a very interesting um, uh, presentation and also the view of um, how um, things can go. We have the corona. Probably we will we'll see other catastrophes come up and therefore to be prepared for that. I think it's a very good point to take up. And also that uh, the distributed uh, uh, net is very important for that. And, and of course, uh, can you uh, divide the distributed net out to off-grid systems so you are um, not dependent on the, the main grid uh, that maybe should go into the legislation for the future? I don't know how it will be, but that's just an idea for these uh, guys sitting and taking care of all of us. Well, thank you very much, Sven. And um, uh, of course, 
we expect that after the uh, whole session has finished, uh, then it will be possible to to uh, uh, re see uh, the whole sessions and that could, could go into what has been said and uh, discussed.